In today's episode, I took in some of the sights of Lille, then enjoyed the day's games in some of my favourite bars with plenty of incident. It was much easier for me to stand up and catch him rather than let him fall on his head. My name's Tim Tunnicliffe, host of the Amateur Rugby Podcast, and I'm here in France to show you the entirety of the Rugby World Cup. I'll be travelling the country, hitting the fan zones, showing you the in-stadium experience and getting the lowdown from all the talking points from what is sure to be an epic World Cup. Yesterday, I joined the Scots in Lille, watched Fiji versus Georgia in the Australian bar, wandered at enormous queues outside the stadium, watched Scotland run riot versus Romania and became the victim of some heavy-handed security. When I asked them at half-time what they'd done with it, they said they'd thrown it in the bin. Welcome back to the Rugby World Cup vlog and welcome back to Lille. They've got windmills here, did you know that? Les Moulins in French, in case you didn't know. Had a brilliant day in Lille yesterday with all the Scots. Whole lot of fun. And we're back in town today to watch more games in the bars of Lille. And I'm going to show you a couple of other little things as well, which I haven't shown you before from this city. Let's go. It's got some beautiful architecture. There's a river. Some beautiful churches. And a brutal looking cathedral. But that's enough of that. Let's go watch some ruggers. Well, for 15 minutes, this was really, really fun. Portugal running the ball all over the place. Getting a 7-3 lead against Australia with an amazing try in the corner from the outside centre, Betancourt. He then uh, immediately got himself yellow carded with a high shot, which fortunately was not upgraded to a red. But then Australia came back into the game, ground away, and they're now 24-7 ahead. Portugal had one disallowed right at the end, though, just in touch. So it's very competitive, but I think, unfortunately, Portugal's Goose is cooked now and it might well end up being a heavy score in the second half. But fair play to Portugal. They gave Australia a bit of a bloody nose there in the first half and good on them for it. In the Australian bar, with I think zero Australians, it certainly seems like every time Portugal do anything good, there's huge cheers going out, which is just a whole lot of fun as well. And by the way, it's a scorching day here while the sun's just gone down over here now, but 26 degrees here to go today in Lyon. The type of day when you can get really drunk by accident. Australian bar, hot Sunday, still daylight. It's got very much church vibes, which I'm enjoying a lot. <laughs> right, I'm gonna get some food before the second half. up at 34 14 fair play to both teams playing on and on and on it went to the 85th minute this game in the end i don't think either team wanted to stop portugal have made a huge amount of fans this world cup and uh you can see why they play with spirit and they play with verve and they just want to move the ball the entire time which is refreshing in the international game australia looked like a group of people that maybe hadn't had too much sleep this week and they gutsed it out. They found a way and they got the uh, they got the bonus point win, which was expected, but you could just see it was not a fun time for them. Feel for them. Right, just one more game to go today. Probably best find some food before we get to that though. When I did the tour of the bars of Lille last weekend, there was only one place I was genuinely sad to leave. It wasn't Temple's Bar. It wasn't the Queen Victoria. It was O Scotland. And I've just done a little walk, done a little recce, and it's still the busiest bar this weekend as well. So that is where I'm going to be watching South Africa versus Tonga. 
which I expect our Tonga will put up for a fight for 20 minutes and then South Africa will crush them. That's the prediction. Let's see what happens. Well, there we go. South Africa were comfortable winners on the scoreboard, but anything but comfortable on the pitch. It was not the crushing I predicted. I think it was like 49 18, something like that. But Tonga fought for every inch of every battle. They were superb. A real credit to the country, the players, everything. <laughs> In other news, I just caught somebody who was about to fall off his stool and basically break his head on the floor. He had about six friends around him. They seemed to think it was funny that he might fall over and to be honest I'd have found it funny too but he was on a high stall and it was just like it was much easier for me to stand up and catch him rather than let him fall on his head so that's what I did. Look at that place. Sunday night in Lille, La Solferino. That's the place to be by all accounts. Right I've had a small burst of energy here but truth be told I'm absolutely exhausted. <sighs> Stick with me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Hit subscribe because next episode, I'm gonna be taking this Rugby World Cup journey to a whole different country. So come with me. Let me know if you're enjoying the comments down below. All of that good stuff. I need some sleep for like three days. Peace, bye. <laughs>